Hi everyone, Angus Campbell here. It's uh, Thursday the 12th of November and um, you'll notice that uh, I'm actually in front of the camera for a change and uh, in a position which is a little more unusual in that uh, I'm giving you a, a different view the other way around so normally uh, I'd be at the bench which is actually behind me in this shot and you'd be looking at uh, the Fury SS here from the other end from the front pointing down this way which is the usual shot but the reason why I've decided to uh, create a video an initial clip this way around is because at the end of the last video last weekend when we were in part five or so of exhaust manufacture then at the end of that I alluded to the fact that I was hoping to uh, finally uh, pick up the cylinder head that we've been waiting for patiently for this for this bike and that the uh, engineering work had finally been completed by Richard over at Wards Engineering and that's exactly uh, what we did on Monday we went over there and, uh, and picked it up and therefore if I just do that you might see on the bench behind me valves tap it but behind it the two exhaust ports of uh, a cylinder head so what I intend to do in this video really is just um, to go over to the bench now and just focus on that head and just to sh show you all the work that we've had to do to that head to get it into a state whereby we think it will work and it's been pretty extensive and it's taken us a long time to do it and I'm indebted to uh, at least three people in helping me get to that stage. The first one is a gentleman by the name of Bob Rogerson whose uh, channel um, is on YouTube and um, for which I'll, I'll put a link in the description and Bob did a, a lot of work over the first two years or sorry over two years or so in really getting the, the basics of this engine together to the extent where what he had to start with was a crank, a right hand crankcase half that was machined and a left hand crankcase half that was an actual blank. Now then, have I got that the right way around now because I'm beginning to wonder. But anyway, one crankcase half was machined by the factory, one was a casting blank. Uh, but at least he had uh, enough to create a datum point from, and uh, we all we began building it up from uh, from there. So Bob did uh, an awful lot of work, and he did document quite a bit of it on his YouTube channel with respect to uh, cylinder boring and, and uh, a number of other tasks, which he uh, managed to uh, complete very professionally in his workshop at his home. Um, the second person that I'm indebted to is Richie Porter, who um, is another, well, you, you, you might say aficionado of bandits and furies, uh, or you might say an idiot, um, uh, but Rich is, is another band, or a man of the merry band of men, uh, trying to um, get an ex example of, um, of this model on the road and um, he's been kind enough we've done a bit of swapses um, and he's been kind enough as well to provide um, one item of, of a, a part that he's had several examples made up for um, that includes both rolling chassis parts and and engine uh, but hopefully I've been able to uh, reciprocate in being able to provide some spurs from from my stash uh, and also uh, there's one or two bits that I've had manufactured recently myself uh, such as uh, valve tappet buckets uh, where there's a, a set with his name on uh, but anyway he lent me a, he lent me his cylinder head which 
is fully fully machined and I'll explain what I mean by that uh, when we have a look at the head and then the final person is uh, Richard over at Wards Engineering and Rugby who uh, took on the job of finishing the head because uh, once um, Bob Rogerton had, had um, got as far as he could with respect to um, uh, mach machining aspects of it then we uh, we had to go into sort of the more specialist work really to uh, to finish it, finish it off um, and so we've now finally ended up with what I think is a completely machined head that will work so uh, let's get over to the bench and what I'll do is just try and uh, describe and take you through uh, the, the tasks and also uh, try and describe some of the challenges that we've had and show you um, uh, the result of all the endeavours of um, I suppose uh, the four of us. Um, for me um, I did a few bits and pieces but mainly for me it was it was tenacity just to get the job done. Uh, the rest of it was uh, really with uh, the help of Bob and Richard and also as I say with the kind uh, assistance of um, patterns being provided by by Richie. So let's go and have a look and I'll, uh, I'll we'll do some close-up uh, of, of what's what we've managed to achieve uh, and I think it's it's pretty impressive and as I say hopefully it will enable us then to finally complete this motor over the next month or two and if um, Stafford next year does happen either in April or October we might just have a running machine by then rather than what would have been this year a mainly completed um, static machine. Right here we are then it's, uh, at, at what's quite a busy bench at the moment because we've uh, we've still got all the uh, exhaust parts etc over here that we're working on in parallel with this but um, at least now we've got a, a bit of a, a distraction to provide a bit of variety and give us a bit of a break from exhaust uh, because um, although they're coming on well I'm sure you're probably sick of uh, seeing tubular coned, chromed cones on, uh, on video and some uh, idiot thinking he can, he can uh, wield a welder. Um, so here's a brief uh, respite. So here's the cylinder head and this originally arrived with the stash of parts I bought from a gentleman in, in Kent and um, if you've watched my little mini documentary you know, Hell Hath No BSA Fury Nor Triumph Bandit then uh, You'll uh, you'll understand the sort of sequence event of events that led up, up to that. But suffice to say, um, not that long after I'd bought the show Fury off Fail Onslow, um, a stash of parts, Fury parts that uh, someone had spent an awful lot of time and effort collecting, uh, came up for sale. I just decided to cash in, and I was lucky enough to uh, to be in a position to be able to buy those. And and this head came with those parts and superficially you know the head looked looked fine um, the casting appears to be pretty good the alley seems to be fairly good quality um, I have uh, cleaned it in the ultrasonic cleaner before I um, took it over to uh, to wards uh, and that does <coughs> really bring up the sort of fresh cast luster that you get that um, bead blasting and sandblasting etc doesn't, that leaves it with a, with a very matte finish which is difficult to polish up to the same sort of luster. So it looks good, there are uh, no broken fins on it etc and and actually when I first got it without actually examining it too closely I thought it was you know a completed and machined head uh, but I was wrong actually and once we got down into focusing upon this, which was pretty late in the day really, because we were initially we we built up the rolling chassis um, and then did you know a lot of the bottom end work first before we focused in on this. 
initially we didn't realise you know, how uh, incomplete the machining was on this head. But once we got down to, in, to inspecting it, we realised that there was quite a bit of work to do. So the first thing that we'd, we'd noticed was that the domes hadn't been machined. And then when we started to look closely, obviously there were no valve seats in it. And then we realised that the uh, channels for the valve guides and also for the valve tappet buckets down here, they hadn't been machined or line, line machined. Then we realised that on the cam chain side of it, some of the oilways hadn't been drilled. And the oiling system, well, it, it appears quite complex, but I'm sure it, it's probably similar, similar to other overhead cam motors in that essentially the way that oil is fed to the head is via a separate line from the crankcase, from an oil channel through the crankcase up into here. And then from the line here, it's fed through a channel here and then up into the cam bearing and similarly across a channel underneath there into the second cam bearing. And then similar to, I suppose, um, the opposite way around to sort of triumph bushes, there's, you won't probably be able to see it, there's a small hole in the bush which pressurises oil against the cam face. And then on the cam itself, there's a small groove and an oil way uh, which allows the oil, excess oil, to be pushed into the hollow centre of the cam. So it's then forced out onto small holes in the reverse side of each lobe so that it actually lubricates the lobes and also then obviously the uh, the cam tappet buckets. And then at the far end, uh, with respect to, well, it, it wasn't a bearing, originally it was just going to be plain alloy in the head, um, for uh, the, the cam <coughs> the cam bush at the far end, you can see that's got a, a, a diagonal groove in that to draw oil in. It's not actually pressure fed into, into that bushing. So that happens on with both with both cams simultaneously, and then oil is, is sprayed out onto the lobes um, over the tappet buckets, and then oil. Let's see if you can see this. Oil drains out through. You won't be able to see this very well through some drain holes at the bottom of the tappet buckets and those drain holes are connected and drilled through across the head and they drain out at this end through these openings here. Now if you look at you know, the sort of torrents you're working to, there's your oil drain out into the uh, cam chain tunnel and there's your oil feed into uh, the cam bushing so there's very little room to manoeuvre with respect to drilling down to the feed feed line from this side which runs across here and missing you know accidentally drilling into uh, the, if you like, the drain, the drain flow, because then we're, if that happens, you're going to lose pressure. Now it all looks 
you know, totally inadequate with respect to the bore of the holes feeding uh, for the oil feed itself through the cam. Um, but actually, in the early days of the uh, development of the of the engine, then the the head was actually being over oiled, and they couldn't get the oil away fast enough. And you can see here. Let's have a look. Where are we? There's actually two two drainage channels on this side. Let's have a look. Got that one. Got that one. And you can actually see there's almost sort of like tubular shapes in the casting, and these are the drains. And that's on the exhaust side, and then on the inlet side, you've got an, another one here. So you can see that there's two drains on the exhaust side and one drain on the inlet side. And that's because the, the, the pump, the rotary pump, uh, is able to feed an awful lot um, of oil under pressure up here to the extent where there's more than enough going through the um, the cam and lubricating everything that's moving up here as well as cooling it as well. That's one of the major reasons for uh, getting that amount of oil up here. Now, as I say, early on we realised that some of these oil, um, oil feed lines hadn't been drilled and um, that pertains to, let's say, the small feed hole at the base of each of the uh, face, I mean, one, one side's a bushing, I'll explain why in a minute, and, and the faces. And so to do that you've got to drill through the top here and then, and then plug once that's been done. So we had that to do as well, or um, should I say Bob, Bob did that work, Bob Rogerson, and, and what, we all, what Bob also found was that uh, any machining that had already been done for the cams wasn't true. And in fact, he couldn't actually get the cams to line up properly. And so what he had to do um, was to overbore and insert, insert bushes. So you can see only one of these, these holes here is actually as it was intended to be, i.e., uh, the cam face would run directly in the alloy, um, which was going to be okay with the, with the amount of oil that's going to be circulating. Um, but for the other three bushes, i.e. this one, the one on, at this end and the one at this end, um, he had to drill and then insert a bush uh, because the original hole was slightly, slightly off-centre and slightly skew with, and that's the reason why he's done that. But anyway, that's that's going to work, so that's fine. And then um, the, the next thing, as I say, was um, that um, some of the um, so, so securing screw holes for um, some of the uh, covers, cam chain cover and uh, the two rocker covers, hadn't been drilled and tapped. Had to do a bit of work cleaning up. Uh, the whole holes for the for the uh, cylinder head mounting stud and nuts, and then, as I say, you can see it this on this side now. On the other side, you can see where the bushings have been put in for this uh, sort of far end of the cam. And then uh, what Bob did do was face it up, and Bob did uh, also machine out the domes, uh, but he he wasn't he didn't have them. The, the, the capabilities uh, from a machining perspective um, to be able to insert valve seats and all the materials etc. So that's why we then took it to um, Wards Engineering uh, because they're the facil facilities to do that and, and so what they've done is firstly uh, bored out to true 
um, so that there's a consistent centre line through the centre of the valve seat, the valve guide and then the buckets, the tappet buckets. And that was a bit of a job because again those were slightly out of true and so he had to slightly um, overbore for the valve seat and uh, put some um, seats in there of a slightly bigger width which we didn't originally intend to do because he had to centre these up. Um, following that then um, I think he'd already. I think he'd done the um, he'd done the valve guides first to use that as a dating point because then you've got the va you can put the valves in and then you've got your measurements then for um, for the for the seats and grinding down the seats and then the final thing to do then was to um, to bore out uh, the the tappet tappet bucket the bucket tappet cavities. And again, so they were line line board to be true with the valve guides, um, but because of the shape of the head, etc., we had to uh, he had to uh, order uh, in a special boring tool to be able to do that. And then at one point, he thought that with respect to um, the measurements of the uh, tappet buckets, which we'd had made up. Uh, he thought that actually he might not be able to uh, clean clean these up properly um, and that we might have to slightly overbore and and make up one one oversized bucket but in the end it, it just worked out okay and there is um, one tiny bit of one face where there's just a little tiny bit of pitting where it didn't quite clean up, but the rest of it did, so we're fine. Anyway, <coughs> the long and the short of it is that the, the, the deduction by both Bob and Richard is that <coughs> the reason why this ended up as only being a part machine head is that it was scrapped because it wasn't good enough and it would have taken too much work and that's also borne by the fact that um, with respect to the cavity here for this is where the uh, the auto advance and the, and the points sit on the end of the um, what will it be exhaust exhaust cam um, when um, I think Richard was uh, cleaning this or preparing it for some machining, then this, almost like a, a shim, fell out of here and it had been, um, it had just been sort of glued or loctited in. And, and in looking at uh, well, it, it came out anyway, so we left it out. But in looking at this, you realise then that actually the way that um, the way that this has been <coughs> probably cast is that this this is slightly off centre to um, to where the cam centre line ended up. And, and so, you know, they've, they've put almost like a, a spacer in, so they could centre up where the uh, the points back plate would go. Now, this 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 was found by by Richard when he was over at awards. Now I can't remember whether Bob made this up really to again ensure that you know the cavity at this end for mounting the points back plate was then in the same centre line as the cam. He may have done, but um, I, I can't remember. But maybe, Bob, if you're listening, you can. But anyway, not a problem, because it does mean that the, the drillings and the taps 
for uh, of the threads for mounting the uh, points back plate are, are in the right position. So that's good. So in the end, you know, a, quite a complex job. There are probably some other sort of minor things to attend to as well. But in the end, um, there we are. It's it's looking pretty good. And the proof of the pudding is that with this, just a moment, getting low battery. One of the, the beauties of this design is that, um, and you'll see this when we're building it, is you've got the ability to be able to um, insert or, or remove cams with all, with the head in situ when you need to uh, shim up the uh, the tappets, and um, the cams look identical, um, but they're not because. And I've got I've got these the wrong way around. They're not they're not quite because uh, the end of the exhaust cam is drilled to um, take take the stud that uh, drives the auto advance unit. So the the stud pops out of this end to drive the auto advance unit in this, uh, in this cavity here underneath the points. So if we get it the right way around now, so we know this is exhaust. So it's, it's snug. It can turn them by hand. There we go. That's it. We need a bit of lube. And there we are. That one's a bit looser. We do need a bit of oil. Oh, it's not bad. There you go. It's a little bit tight on that one. But there we are. And then you can see with the cam in, there doesn't appear to be to be much room in there at all. And actually, there was uh, if you've read um, Brad Day's excellent book of uh, from the inside about Umberslade Hall and some of the stories from Tom Gunn um, about his review of the design of this head, then uh, you know he he was absolutely shocked at this design. Because although it's a double overhead cam, um, he thought it was a very, very inefficient head because of the very shallow angle of the um, ports coming into the head, uh, especially the inlet port, I think. And that um, the general consensus of, uh, of him and Jack Williams and maybe one or two others was that really they, ne they needed to make the depth of this head much bigger so that there wasn't such a, a shallow, shallow angle going in. Well, that's the exhaust side of it, because it's coming out. Um, going in in the way that the gases have to um, shoot down that angle into, uh, into the, uh, in through the valve. So they thought that was very inefficient. And in fact, um, on this head, we, we could do a little bit of work because of the truing up uh, that Richard's had to do with the um, the valve seats. Then there are uh, there are some ridges actually, so we we could get a file out and start tidying those up. Um, but. I really don't want to risk it, to be honest. And um, in all honesty, for for what this engine's going to do, I'm not going to be trying to do uh, you know 100 mile an hour at 9,000 RPM in in top gear. Um, <clears throat> so I think we'll probably leave well alone. So there we go, one one head. And um, as I say, the um, I keep mentioning. 
Bob and Richard at Wards Engineering, not to be confused with Richard Porter, who very kindly lent his head as a pattern because this is fully machined. And this was to get, you know, some measurements off this um, that we could use for machining that. So I've got to make sure that this is uh, returned to him in one piece, as this is a bit of a rare beast. And does have a yeah, better valve seats in it from the point of view that the um, that this has the valve seats have been ported without a doubt. So I've got to be careful with that. But it's returned. And then uh, just to finish off, uh, we've got inlet valves, slightly bigger than exhaust. Uh, we've got valve springs, collets, etc. Four of those, and again, for the springs, I'm indebted to uh, Richard Porter, and um, also for the uh, seats for the springs as well. Two different sizes of you want to effectively plain washers for that, that, that slot in the head that the uh, the valves sit on so that they're not uh, sorry the valve springs sit on so they're not um, purely sitting on aluminium then finally the uh, the tappet buckets which are an absolute pain to manufacture there's a three stage process involves um, centerless grinding carburizing two stages of machining and these really still aren't officially finished because um, we sent these away to uh, to the grinders which is a pretty specialist job in itself uh, with the drawings and then they've just ground the outer surface to drawing but they've not actually ground the top which should be a very very slight have a very very slight radius on it but anyway in, in speaking to um, Richard over at Wards Engineering then he's suggesting just to um, use an oil stone to clean this up and for it's a bit of a cop out really but um, I don't know anybody anywhere nearby me that's uh, able to do this sort of radius grinding on the top surface even though you know it's quite clearly described in the drawing they all seem to avoid it so anyway that's it uh, for now I think so that's just just a bit of a an interlude from the exhaust manufacturer just to focus in on the head now we've got it because um, you know for a bit of variety we can begin to start planning um, building the components of the head up and one of the first things to do on that probably will be um, grinding in the, uh, the valves they do look good So that will probably be the next video when we uh, focus on the head. So we might call this cylinder head part one, but part two certainly will probably be initially, uh, initially then grinding in the valves and, um, and fitting the valves. But one of the jobs we've got to do as well is it's just going to be a test fit initially because at the moment, with respect to the new valve seats, they're only being cut to a, a certain extent and uh, the fitting of the valve springs and tappet buckets we've then got to determine what um, clearance we've got between the the top of the tappet buckets and the cam lobes 
because uh, what I haven't got out, but what I've got are, uh, is the fact that what um, sits on top of the whoops on top of the valve stem and spring and collar is a shim, and then the the tappet bucket sits on that shim. But it's a very and all that shit although the shim is probably only well it's less than a centimeter in diameter and there's there's a small indentation in the center of the hollow of that that the uh, bucket sits on you might think well the bucket might be prone then to rock um, but that's why it's it's such a, a close fit only by about a thou or so in uh, into its cavity in the head it's it's kept um, you know, to a, it, it's in there to a very close tolerance, so it doesn't rock. Um, and also, uh, I was told I didn't know this, uh, but the reason I think it was Richie Porter's that told me that the reason why these valve buckets have a, a slight radius ground into them is that so that they slowly rotate to even up the wear, which I didn't realise, didn't appreciate. So there we go, some of the nuances of, um, of overhead cam engineering, which, um, you know, for this era of um, uh, British motorcycle manufacture, there were, it was pretty few, uh, few, you know, few and far between to find a overhead cam head. Right, well, I think that's brought you up to date. So we've set the scene then to uh, begin at some point the work on, on fitting the head. And uh, I hope that's been... Uh, interesting um, and gives you some idea of why you know with respect to the build of this E35 SS then um, including the parallel work that we did in tandem with the bandit then by the time this is finished it'll be 20 years in the making really and 30 years since I, uh, I first bought the uh, show fury from Vail Onslow bloody frightening really so uh, before we start thinking about how old I am uh, let's leave it there uh, thanks very much for watching everybody, thanks for your interest uh, and comments and any subscriptions and we'll see you all again soon and we'll, we'll crack on because uh, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Thanks everybody, see you again soon, bye bye.